Despite the police's best efforts, one out of three violent crimes in America goes unsolved. But there is a new forensic tool that is helping investigators generate leads, narrow suspect lists, and identify unknown remains. Parabon Nanolabs of Reston, Virginia has developed sophisticated software capable of unlocking information contained in DNA left at a crime scene. Traditionally, if a DNA sample failed to produce a database match, law enforcement was out of luck and without a lead. But now, because of Parabon Snapshot, investigators will have their first clue of what a suspect looks like. With Snapshot, we can predict the physical traits of the source of that DNA and make downstream investigation a lot more efficient because they do not have to waste energy on subjects that really can be discounted because of their DNA. We run it through the snapshot algorithms and produce predictions about that person, things that that investigator could not have known. The person's ancestry, their eye color, the shape of their face, all of that information, and we deliver that back to the investigator. So this company's taking DNA, evidence may be found at a crime scene. They figure this is our, our suspect or culprit. We can put it in this machine, we can get his face. We've never even seen him anytime it's the last resort on a potential cold case situation. This is DNA on someone they've never seen before. And in fact, the Edmonton Police Service got a little bit of news over the week talking about how they released some of this information looking for a suspect. Let's let Parab and that group explain more how this potentially could work and why there might be some problems with this process. Let's watch more. With each trait prediction, like eye or hair color, Snapshot provides a level of confidence derived from its performance on thousands of out of sample tests. To give you an idea of the program's accuracy, Dr. Greytech's DNA was analyzed. This is a composite picture, and this is an actual picture of her. <coughs> Snapshot has helped law enforcement agencies around the world solve some of their toughest cases quickly and efficiently. They look at this new technology in Snapshot and say, hey, I can reinvigorate my case. I can learn something about the perpetrator that I don't know, and that could be really important. So we've had a wonderful reception by the law enforcement community. Just as a sketch artist uses information from an eyewitness to create a composite, Snapshot uses information from a genetic witness to compute a composite. To compute. A composite. This is the what this is what Edmonton uh, Police Service posted on their Twitter uh, about a potential cold case from years ago, based off of some DNA evidence. There's look at this image for this first graphic here, you guys, uh, and it caught a little bit of trouble over this because they don't know exactly what the person looked like because there's things that are involved with this that you can't just tell, especially after so many years. Uh, really quick, uh, uh, some information about how this whole thing fell apart for them. So on Tuesday, the Edmonton Police Service shared a computer generated image of a suspect they created with DNA phenotyping, which it used for the first time in hopes of identifying a suspect from a 2019 sexual assault case. They used DNA evidence from the case and this company that we just looked at, uh, Paraban Nano Labs, created that image of a young black man. The composite did not factor in the suspect's age, BMI, or environmental factors like facial hair, tattoos, scars. Uh, so the EPS, this uh, police service, then released this image to the public on its website and on social media platforms, including its Twitter, claiming it to be a last resort after all investigative avenues had been exhausted. So they're like, let's just slap this through here. Now that image that they created of that uh, person that works there, that woman, and then the real image, they know what her face looks like. So when you're picking and choosing some of these DNA examples and pieces and slapping it together, you have a guide. I assume they went off the guide of who she was. I don't know their process, but it looked closer than some of these others did that we're gonna get to in a minute. Uh, Yaz, what are the potential, I think maybe you can see some of the potential issues with this process of just going, hey, we have this DNA that has like uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the majority of it is say African in ancestry. <laughs> Let's slap this face on the image. Yeah, I hate this story. I know you're excited <laughs> for it, but I think it's so creepy. I, I hate looking at all this stuff. But I also thought it was funny when they were talking about his sophisticated software, but he looks like he was working on a keyboard from the 90s. I don't know if anybody else caught that. <laughs> but 
I mean, the bigger concern here for me isn't the technology itself, but the way that it will probably be used despite whatever they're gonna say, how it's gonna be used, right? The fact that we're still obsessed with reactionary crime investigations instead of preventing crime in the first place, I think is another aspect to this story. And you know, we have to do both at the same time. So I'm not saying that we need to focus all of our energy in one and not the other, but I would like to think that they're gonna use this technology appropriately and with discernment, but we have so many reasons why not to trust law enforcement and our increasingly big brother like government, you know? And we know that the legal system is flawed. I just did a story for Rebel HQ about Adnan Syed and how he yeah. was just declared innocent after serving 23 years of a life sentence for a crime that apparently he did not commit. And I'm not confident that better technology, better technology is going to help bridge that gap between cases that are convicted rightfully and those that are convicted wrongfully. Uh, speaking of that, let's go to a couple of these other snapshots. Let's go to these graphics at the bottom, you guys, starting with number eight. This particular group that's pointing out how accurate their information is, maybe have shown the potential problems that we're discussing. Because then again, maybe someone gets this publicly and says, that's the guy, because that's how people think. And if they find someone out there that looks anything like this random composite, not sketch, 3D imagery that they made, there could be some vigilantism, there could be even police solvers who's like, that's what I've seen, let's go get them. And we know how sometimes aggressive they can get. Anyway, it goes, this is from Snapshot's DNA analysis of one particular sample. There's the image on the left, the computer generated image on the left. And the actual photo of the suspect culprit, again, age, BMI, facial hair, scars, anything that you can't figure out from normal natural environments changes. Even glasses, it looks just like him, doesn't it? Let's go to the next one. That one's a little bit closer, <laughs> I have to admit, that one's a little bit closer. But again, if you see this, there's so many different people it could look like. And many times those sketches that you know traditionally happen in police sketches, I think are a little bit off. I just wonder the potential dangers that could come with it. But they did say, if we find someone and bring them in, we just check their DNA and see if it matches. After you've already snatched them off the streets, potentially roughed them up and maybe have the wrong guy. Maybe you wanna make this process a little bit better. Um, so we'll see if that's the future. And if you need to look out to see if your face has popped up on any police searches when you've done nothing.